What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm John. Uh, today we're going to be talking about interest rates, which are extremely important in the context of time valued money. But before we start, if you like these videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps me and encourages me to keep making these videos. Okay, so let's hop to it. So before you can do anything in TBM, you need to make sure you understand interest rates and, and kind of how they work, right? So very quickly, uh, you, you have two kind of overarching types of interest rates. You've got an APR, which stands for annual percentage rate, and then you've got an effective rate. Now, the first thing you want to understand is that an APR, uh, which we sometimes call a, a quoted rate or a stated rate or a nominal rate, is not actually the true interest rate in most cases. It's just the rate that we say. For example, I can tell you 10% interest, but that doesn't really tell you how much you're paying. What if it's compounding semi-annually? What if it's compounding monthly? Right? 10% just tells you the nominal amount of interest that there is in a year. It does not take into account any compounding. The effective interest rate is the actual interest rate that applies to your particular situation. Now, an effective interest rate can be annual. We call that an effective annual rate, but it can also be monthly, quarterly, weekly, whatever, right? Whereas an APR is always annual, an effective rate could be for any period. One thing that's important to understand is the more often you compound, the higher the effective interest rate gets. Now let's hop over to an example to see how that works. So let's compare these two things. First one says 10% APR compounded annually. And the second one is 10% APR compounded semi-annually. Annually is once a year. Semi-annually is twice a year. Now, they both say 10%. You see, that is the APR. Technically, that's true. They're both paying 10% per year. Now, if I were to show you on a timeline what that means, this one means 10% once per year. This, on the other hand, means 5% twice a year. That's what compounding semi-annually means. That you're taking the interest and you're dividing it into semi-annual periods, two periods. So yes, it adds up to 10%, but in reality, it's a little bit more than 10% because of compounding. This 5% will compound on this 5%. So this one has an effective annual rate of 10%. It actually is 10%. But let's take a look at a formula that can help us solve the second one. Now here's a formula to calculate an effective annual rate. One plus the APR divided by M. M is your compounding frequency. So in this case, M is two. So let's try this. I'm gonna do it right over here. One plus APR of 10%, so that's 0.1 over two to the power of two minus one. That'll give me about 10.25%. You see, nominally it was 10%, but effectively, truly, it's 10.25% per year. To do this on the financial calculator, and I'm using a Texas Instrument BA2+, it's the best calculator in my opinion, press second function, two. That'll take you to the iConvert tool. It's what we use to calculate effective rates. So nom, that's our nominal rate. We're gonna enter 10, so one, zero, enter, then I'll arrow up. CY stands for compounds per year. That's like M from the previous example or if you're using a formula. Okay, so this is M. I'm gonna enter two and then press enter to save it. Arrow up. Now here's my effective rate. I'm gonna go ahead and hit compute. And I've got my 10.25%. So it's the same thing as using the formula, but for those of you that have or like to use the financial calculator, there's just another way to do it. Now, earlier I said that an effective rate can be for any period. Now I showed you an effective annual rate, but you can also have effective monthly rates, effective quarterly rates, effective weekly rates. And here's the formula for that. So in this example, it says your account earns 10% APR compounded semi-annually. So we have got an M of two. What is the effective monthly rate? So we're gonna introduce a new variable. And that variable is F. You can see it right there, it's kind of under the arrow. F is the effective frequency. So I want an effective monthly rate. That means I'm going to set my F to 12. So let's see what that gives us. One plus APR, that's 10% over two to the power of two over 12 minus one. We'll throw that into our calculator. So I got 0.008165. And if I multiply that by 100, that's 0.8165%, and that is per month. 
So that is the effective or the true monthly rate if you have 10% APR compounding twice per year. Now, what if you already have an effective rate, but you want a different one? Here, I'll show you how to convert one effective rate into another. So now we're no longer dealing with an APR, we're going from effective to effective. So in this example, it says your account earns an effective monthly rate of 1.5. So I've given you an effective monthly rate. What is the effective quarterly rate? Very simple to do. I've given you a formula here. All you need is the effective rate you have. We call that R old. F old over F new. The old is the effective you have. So I've got an effective monthly rate. My F old is 12. I want to convert that to a new rate that is, that is quarterly. So my new F is 4. So my formula is 1 plus 0 0.015. Okay, I'm not sure why I made that so high. Old F, that's 12. New F, that's 4, minus 1. So I get 0 0.045678, which is 4.5678%. So that is my quarterly rate. Now to end, we're going to spice it up a little bit and talk about something called continuous compounding. Now we saw that compounding is really taking your APR and dividing it into periods, but continuously means an infinite number of periods, where in theory, interest is constantly compounding. Every second, every millisecond, it's just infinitely compounding. For this, we have a completely different form. So here it says you earn 10% APR compounded continuously. What is the effective annual rate? Okay, so all I need to do is E to the power of 10%, so to the power of 0.1 minus one. So on the calculator, that gives me 0 0.10517 which is about 10.51% per year. That's it for interest rates. Make sure you watch this next video on how to use effective interest rates to calculate present and future values of lump sums.